happy Friday. It's about 8.20. I bet if I give you guys two guesses on where I'm going, y'all can guess. Because when it's a Friday and it's this early, there's only two places I go. One is Wesley's Vet, and two is the dentist. We're actually on the way, um, on our way to my dentist because it's my cleaning. I feel like I just, I go to the dentist way too often. Like, I don't even like my dentist. <laughs> Why do I see them so much? 8.30, we have a dental cleaning. It's just, it's fast. I almost wanted to reschedule, but it's already been rescheduled twice. Um, and if I reschedule more than once, I basically move into the second half of the year. You know how you're supposed to have a cleaning twice a year? I'll just have one a year. So I know better. I have to like force myself into these adulting type things. So 8.30, I have a couple minutes to talk to you guys before that appointment. Yesterday we started virtual learning or distance learning or e-learning or whatever your district calls it, but I really would have wished that they just postponed the school year and they started in September, like when I was in school. You start in the fall after Labor Day and then um, you have summer break off. They just went ahead and started, um, hold on a second. It's kinda hot in here, can you guys hear me? It's okay, I'll tough it out for you guys. Um, they didn't decide to postpone the year, which is so weird. Whatever you guys decided to do, everyone's family has struggled so hard with the decision of sending kids back to school or not. Well. Long story short, we started distance learning yesterday. Both of my kids are under public school system curriculums, which means both of them had to log in. You know, both of them are being up, upheld under like truancy policies. So it's not something where you could just be like, well, we'll figure it out. No, like you actually have to do it. And it was so weird. It was hard and confusing because you have two kids, like I have two kids, two different age groups, and you, you know, you, you see their Zoom calls and the children that are there, and it's so different. You have kids that literally just woke up and the mom's like in a bathroom struggling, trying to figure out technology because this is something that you're not used to doing. There's other parents that are, you know, trying to get out the door, trying to get to work, and someone else is helping the child, like maybe a tutor or a counselor or a babysitter or something. You know, you have other parents that are on conference calls that are working, and you see them in the background of these videos. You have kids that are in daycare, and so they're trying to do school with their little face mask on, and there's kids running around everywhere. I can't imagine being a child and being under this high-stress situation and still being held responsible to learn whatever the curriculum is for that school year. I mean, we are for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, all experiencing some form of low-grade trauma. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so... I don't know how I'm gonna do it for the next few weeks. I know we do have the option to do face-to-face, -to -face, um, and it's what we decided to do, but the whole plan is the first four weeks will be distance learning, and then if you selected face-to-face -face education or learning, then you go back to school. But I would imagine that after a couple of weeks, someone's gonna get sick, and they're probably gonna close their school down again for a few weeks or even longer, which means we go back to distance learning. So, it's just one of those things where I have to be mentally prepared to have to teach two curriculums to my own kids, um, for this school year and that's okay. I can I can manage it, but I just have to Really hunker down and make a new routine for myself, which means I am going to have to start working Probably nights, you know doing this at night doing editing at night So if there is a caffeine shortage or maybe a Disappearance of amphetamines do not come check at my house <laughs> because this one's gonna need them. Um, but anyway, so this weekend, I have a lot of work to do. Um, we're gonna do the dentist today. I have to go to Ulta. Then I have to, what else do I have to do? Um, I have to go to therapy at four. Tomorrow, I have to work all day. And then Sunday, Sunday, ideally, I wanted to go see a house that um, recently went up for sale that is so amazing. 
but I don't want to jinx it, so I'm not going to talk about it yet. Um, I'm going the back way to my dentist, which is why it looks weird. <laughs> I didn't get lost, you guys. <laughs> I don't have a secret apartment. <laughs> it's going to be a very busy weekend, but not exciting busy. It's just going to be a lot of work for me to do. Uh, Parker um, has his girls, so they're going to be on that side of town for the majority of the weekend. Probably the all the weekend, the whole weekend whatever anyway but that's it nothing too exciting um i feel like i needed to update you guys on something what was it it was like oh my god when i vlog i'm gonna update the pandas on x y and z don't remember what it was but that's okay if i think about it i'll check back in you guys it is 9 30. let me turn off my air okay so are any of you guys, this is gonna, we're gonna be the minority in this conversation right now, but I need this minority to come in strong for me. The minority is those of us that are always cold. <laughs> that is me. So right now, Texas is under heat advisory because we've had like, I don't know how many, a hundred, over a hundred degree days um, in a row. And I'm okay with it. Like I'm, I'm perfectly, perfectly okay with it um, I'm always cold and so I do this thing on my car um, like my car conditioner where I leave it at 72 and on auto so that it's comfortable you know it's like um it's like cool enough but it's not cold where you get like goosebumps but because it's hundred degrees outside it takes a little longer to cool my car and in the amount of time that it takes to cool my car I get cold <laughs> first world problems so, are any of you guys in that minority where you're always cold and you feel personally victimized by the auto setting in your car? Because I do. <laughs> the reason that I'm checking in with you guys right now after my dentist appointment is because I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that I have wanted a big hunk. It's a candy bar for those of you that are unfamiliar. I've wanted a big hunk for the last three weeks and I've gone to three different places in the last few days Not necessarily today Just randomly like if I needed to go do um, Some grocery shopping. I'll take a peek right now. Um, I popped into a CVS because I needed to pick up a prescription Took a peek so three different places in my convenient radius uh, nobody has a big hunk so I was like well this sucks and I probably shouldn't be looking into getting a giant nougat candy bar after I leave the dentist <laughs> which two pieces of good news the first news is no cavities nothing's wrong with my teeth my teeth are looking amazing everything's fine business as usual they try to sell me on orthodontics I always say no they say I'm gonna regret it because I have crowding and I'm like because I have my four wisdom teeth and I have to say for me to have all four wisdom teeth and they're all healthy and there's nothing wrong with them and they're not dirty and they don't have like weird buildup on them and the the buildup I mean the um, the crowding it's not it's not really oh it's not crowding like I could still get floss in there but they really want me to they really want me to get that orthodontics sitch taken care of so I left CVS. I was really disappointed that I didn't um, find my big hunk. So I crossed over into Jack in the Box because if you guys haven't had a sourdough breakfast, Jack, you're missing out on life. I think it's a California thing because I really like Jack in the Box, except their tacos. I don't know what, if you are team Jack in the Box tacos, I really don't think we could be friends in real life. <laughs> They're very nasty. <laughs> so I crossed over to Jack in the Box, even though I shouldn't, because I have fluoride on my teeth right now, but whatever, that's a story for another day. And the woman is like, honey, let me tell ya, I told that man, you best not look up my register, because the last time you did that, it was locked up for six hours. And by golly, let me tell you, what do you think he done did? And I was like, oh, I am so invested in this story. You need to fit. And I was like, what did he do? I'm like trying to give her my card. When someone is like that with me and they treat me like a friend, I jump into the role and I take it very seriously. And I was like, what did he do? And she's like, he locked up my register. And I was like, did you hit him? I hope you hit him. She starts laughing. She's like, can you believe it? She's like, I'm so mad. 
I'm gonna give you your breakfast for free. And I was like, no, no, you don't have to do that. Can you use another one of the registers? And she's like, what do you think he did? He locked up those two. And I was like, dang, man. I was like, but are we really surprised her name was Loretta? I was like, are we really surprised, Loretta? I was like, it's 2020. And she's like, mm -hmm. and she goes, you're right. And she gave me my breakfast and I left. So I got free breakfast that I can't eat yet until this fluoride stops being so weird. So I don't mean to brag, but we're kind of killing it this morning. So we're heading home. I'm gonna eat my breakfast. This fluoride is, is terrible. Hey, you guys. It's about 2.30. I just got done filming this makeup look, which is the exact, I mean to the T, the exact makeup that I did on um, our wedding day, our elopement. Um, and I wanted to record it for you guys because I get asked, what lip color were you wearing and what eyeshadow palette did you use? Now, this is a look that I've done very often. <laughs> it's like my go-to makeup look. I just... I really like these products and I like them in combination and I thought they would be really good for a look that I needed to kind of melt away gracefully throughout the day. <laughs> and if it didn't, it was totally fine as long as it lasted enough for the elopement and the, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of thought put into it. There wasn't a lot of thought put into the products I used. It was just products that I love. And I just decided to group them together. They never let me down kind of thing, you know? Um, tried and true's, oldies but goodies, favorite. Anyway, I filmed this as they get ready with me. And then right now I have to film the, hey, by the way, we're married video. For those of you guys that don't follow us on Instagram, like the official announcement, I wanna show you guys our wedding album and the dress and all that stuff. And then um, at four o'clock I have therapy and it's already 2.30. So I just wanted to check in. I wanted to say, hey guys, what's up? And um, then get moving because we're falling behind. And I'm out of breath because I, breath, breath. I'm out of breath because I ran upstairs. So that's it. That's all I got going on. I'm not looking forward to therapy. I haven't been in like two weeks. Two and a half weeks, because we were out of town. I haven't been in two and a half weeks, and I just, I have a yucky taste in my mouth. Like, I'm in a good place right now, and I don't want to poke the bear. You know what I'm saying? Do you guys feel like that? If you've been therapized, <laughs> I say that word a lot. It's not a word. I just don't know how to turn therapy into a verb. <laughs> if you've been therapized for, for a while, you know that sometimes it, you just... <laughs> being dramatic and this is why when people are like why bark collars it's so savage it's like because I have four dogs and they're all barky <laughs> they're getting a break they get breaks from time to time they're not always wearing them what was I telling you guys oh so if you do therapy you know what it's like sometimes it feels like very physically and emotionally draining like if you're just not up for it it could totally ruin your day your weekend your next couple of days it just it's very exhausting and you sit there and you talk which you would think I'm a pro at but sometimes you walk out and you're just like I'm sucking at life what am I doing what is life <laughs> hey you guys all right it's almost six o'clock do you remember when I told you guys earlier today that I feel personally victimized by um, being cold by my air conditioning <laughs> Well, apparently it's running so hard because today is the hottest day of the year. <laughs> so you're not letting me down. You're doing your job. I'm just being a whiny. <laughs> All right, so I left therapy. Today was one of those sessions that was super helpful. Do you remember I was like, oh, I don't wanna to go to therapy. It ruins my mood. It's the worst. Me, 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 me. <laughs> So today was a session that needed to happen. I didn't realize it needed to happen and it was so good. One thing that happened out of it was something I wasn't expecting, which is what I'm gonna talk to you guys about. And then the other thing I was like, okay, I know, I know. I could do better, I could do better. I'm working on it, Susan, I'm working on it. Oh my gosh, you guys, speaking of Susan, 
I got a message the other day on Instagram because I was talking about how it infuriates me when people post stuff on their Instagram stories with the filter. They're like, hey, buy this sweater. It's the most beautiful lavender you've ever seen in your life. I'm like, listen, that sweater doesn't look lavender. It looks like a speckled teal because you have a filter on it that you think looks artsy, but it really just doesn't show what you're trying to show me. And it's making me unreasonably ragey. <laughs> and so, part of like the, the the dialogue that I wrote down in my rant was like no one can see what you're talking about Susan and so someone direct messaged me and said hi my name is Susan and I really I really find the jokes funnier when they're about my sister Karen <laughs> it made me laugh for like an hour so apparently there is a Susan that has a sister named Karen and both of these poor women with these names get personally victimized every day by just having that name now I grew up in a community where you called people Jose and Maria for everything. And so I know what it's like culturally that it's not a big deal, but I can also see how it can hurt people's feelings. So I can see both points. So I can also be like, it's not that big of a deal. Like we call people Maria and Jose all the time, you know? But when you really dissect it and you break it down, it's like, well, it's actually pretty rude. <laughs> So, um, where was I going with this? Uh, Susan, the filter, uh, therapy. Okay, so today in therapy, I realized how basic I am. Due to my upbringing, how I was raised, what I've learned, all that stuff. The reason that I became best friends with Sam instantly. I figured out the reason, the catalyst, the motivator, the reason why Sam and I hit it off like this immediately was because Sam does this thing that we as humans tend to skip. So talking to my therapist, as humans, we're so simple, right? Something happens, then we need it to be validated, then we can heal from it. But most of the time in our relationships, something happens, and then when we share, people jump in to fix it they jump in as a fixer because they want to make the pain go away. They want to make it go away. They want to move on, right? And so if I tell someone, well, this is, this is making me sad. This is worrying me. This is giving me anxiety. They automatically jump into fixing it. I want to make it better. But as humans, we're so simple that we want someone in that in-between step that says, man, it sucks that you feel that sad. Like I totally, understand why that's going on or what did that say to you? I'm gonna go fuck her up. You know, like you want that connection with the person. So when I met Sam, even before we met physically, when we were just digital friends, she always had that in-between step where she acknowledges what you're feeling. Do you remember you guys a couple of vlogs ago that I told you my garbage disposal broke? Well, a couple years ago, my garbage disposal broke. I sat on the kitchen floor and I cried. And what did Sam do? She sat on the floor with all the garbage disposal gunk, sat with me and was like, all right, well, we're just gonna sit here. And she literally said, you guys, I'll never forget, man, make some room for me. I wanna sit next to you. And she sat there in the garbage disposal gunk, kept me company, acknowledged that this was time and that we would get through it when I was ready to. And so, I challenge you guys to revisit your relationships, revisit your romantic partnership, revisit your best friendship, revisit your relationship with your mom, any relationship, your coworker, you know, uh, your boss, revisit all of those connections you have with humans in your life. Do you jump to fix it mode or do you take the time to hold their heart when they're feeling heavy? because that step is so important. And I really hope and I pray to God that as I raise my children and my bonus daughters, that I'm able to instill that value in them. That when someone is hurting, when someone is sad, when someone is happy, when anybody comes to you with any feeling, you share that feeling with them before you jump into fixing it or providing a solution or giving advice. You take that moment to, to hold their feelings for them for a little bit, like with them. It's so important. And when I made that connection today, I was like, 
This is why Sam is so important to me. This is why she's so special and why it was so easy to connect with her instantly because never in my 28 years of life had I ever had a connection like that with someone, not with my ex-husband, not with my mom, not with my boss, with anybody. I've never had that connection where they instantly know to sit in your pain, to sit in your happiness, to sit in your sadness and then help you and then ask, do you want advice? Do you want help? Do you want to go murder? <laughs> I never had that happen and so Sam has that key missing component or element that is so important in really important relationships or rather in all relationships really um, so special shout out to Sam I know a lot of you guys have asked about her it's like why don't you talk about Sam anymore I was like well because we talk almost every day but corona so I haven't seen her in a year actually when you guys see this vlog it's probably gonna be her birthday birthday's on August 21st. We just pulled into a shopping center that has an Ulta because I am looking for this specific Bliss product that I want to try because using a mask all the time has congested my skin beyond belief. And so the products that I use in my skincare routine are all pretty good exfoliators. Like my 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 toner exfoliates my serum exfoliates my night cream exfoliates like everything that i use exfoliates my cleanser exfoliates everything that i use exfoliates but none of it is decongestive or, or decongest my skin none of it purifies my pores like you would think okay it's a cleanser so it's supposed to purify your pores but not necessarily there's certain products that you want to look for um, when you're trying to really decongest your pores to make your skin breathe. And right now that I'm suppressing my skin under a mask every time I have to go out, my skin's not having it. She's like, Meh. not cool. Got to do something about this. So she's being, she's being very reactive and I'm not okay with it. So, um, are you going or not? So we are at Ulta because I tracked down this product that I want to check out. Um, it is a toner from Bliss that is not only cruelty free and vegan, but it is a toner that is specifically designed to decongest your pores and also shrink them in size. Listen, if you're a product that's going to tone my skin, decongest my pores and also shrink the pore size, I'm willing to take that risk. I want to find out for myself. So supposedly this Ulta has it in stock. So we're going to buy it. But before we do that, I need to put on my mask. Do you guys want to see how cute my mask is? Look at this. Oh snap. It matches my outfit. So we're at Ulta. We're going to get this toner. And it just so happens that this Ulta is in the same shopping center as the ramen place that I like. Which means I might as well get some udon noodles to go. <laughs> guys mission accomplished i got the bliss clear genius clarifying gel cleanser and this is like the trigger product this is what brought me into the store this is the clear genius clarifying toner and serum so this is look how thick it is isn't that cool so this is a product that is supposed to help with skin congestion um it's supposed to shrink your pore size and it also has salicylic acid which is awesome because it helps fight you know like breakouts my skin is sensitive like I can't do benzoyl peroxide and I don't allow benzoyl peroxide in my home because it bleaches everything. Um, it's, it's just not good. It's super strong, you know? I mean, not for this, like it's not, it's way too dramatic for, for what I'm suffering with. <laughs> so I went in to find this little guy um, and I was like, well, I'm already here. I might as well get the cleanser too. <laughs> I'm actually parked outside the ramen place because they said my order would be ready in 15 minutes. I don't think so. I mean, the broth is just sitting there, right? And they just need to like dunk the noodles in it. Actually, I don't even think they put the noodles in it until I get home because it's a to-go order. Let's go find out. Guys, seven o'clock. I just got the dogs settled. They went potty. They had their pills. They're eating dinner currently. You guys hear them? They're currently eating their dinner. Now I'm gonna eat my dinner. And before I'm able to finish, I have to give Leslie his insulin. This is why I always have to rush home. So definitely having to rush home and take care of them. It's important because if I don't tend to Wesley at a very specific time all the time, then it just throws him off. So it's in everyone's best interest to just keep him on target. So I'm a little bit behind right now, but I wanted to show you guys the udon. They did such a good job presenting it. 
Usually when you get takeout, like when I order pho takeout, like you have to use your own bowl. You have to like, you have to fend for yourself. They put something in a box and something in a container and that's it, you fend for yourself. Um, the udon, this place, Ramen Hakata did such a good job. So they put it in a bowl already and it's all displayed just like when you're actually eating. God bless you, Missy. Hey, are you investigating? What's going on? You can't eat this. Ernie, down. Thank you. So they, down, do not, do not. They played it just like when you go into the restaurant. This is exactly what it looks like, except with their really cool, you know, dishes. And then they put the, the broth in a container. You know, I don't like when you don't listen to your mama. What are you doing? You can't have this. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. These containers, we get them from the pho restaurant and I always put them in the dishwasher and then keep them. And they're great for like getting ice out of the ice maker, drinking water, they're really handy. I also use it to heat up broth when um, I'm making rice or like the dog's food. So anyway, super handy. Oh, you know what I should do? Is I should do one of those cool, seriously? Bájate. Bájate y siéntate. No seas grosera. I should do one of those like super sexy pour over shots, you know, like slow motion. Tell me the truth, did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy it as much as I did? Cause it smells really good. Anyway, I gotta finish up with the dogs. I gotta eat dinner. Um, but I think that's it for tonight. I really need to wash my face. Like my face is like, <clears throat> I'm not used to wearing this much makeup. Can you please go wash your face? And I'm excited to try that new toner. And I'm also excited to use a new cleansing balm that I got as PR the other day. So we'll see how that baby melts everything off this face. Taking off your makeup is the equivalent of taking off your bra or taking off your heels after a long day. Am I right? Hey you guys, happy Saturday. It's about two o'clock. So today's, I'm sorry. Am I bothering you? Today's been kind of a slow day. I spent the majority of the morning editing my content for Monday and answering your comments on this weekend's vlog. This weekend's vlog was a little triggering for some people, which is okay, but it's usually, it usually happens in vlogs where I don't expect anything in the vlog to be triggering. <laughs> so it was a little weird, but it's okay, because it was a good vlog. You guys, the majority of you seem to enjoy it, which is nice. On Monday, I'm posting my wedding announcement video. It's not really like a big announcement or anything, but I really wanted to make sure that I covered my lip color, the masks, where I got them, the dress, and all of that stuff. So that video is going up on Monday. When you see this vlog, it's already live. And that's what I spent the majority of the morning today editing. I just got back from doing a grocery pickup from Walmart, and I came home to really awesome packages. So a couple of weeks ago, one of you guys left me a comment and said that the limited edition summer scents of the native deodorants were amazing and you did not steer me wrong, whoever you were, you delicious panda. I ordered one of each scent to try them out. You guys know vanilla coconut is my favorite scent. So when I heard there was like an apple one, a peach one, and a pink cactus or a pear cactus or whatever um, scented one, I had to try and I couldn't wait. I already smelled them and they smell freaking delicious. So I got the, it's like a build your own multi-pack or whatever. And these are the three newest scents. Cactus flower and poppy, apple and honeysuckle, and sweet peach and nectar. I can't decide which one's my favorite. I think this one's the more unique one. I love all of them. They all smell delicious. I don't think any of them are exclusionary fragrances. You know how, like patchouli. Not everyone's gonna like patchouli. Um, I think they're all very friendly fragrances, but probably this one's my favorite, which I'm super happy that on a whim, listening to you guys, I ordered the mini size. This is like the perfect size to carry in your purse if you need to reapply because it is a natural deodorant, or if you're gonna go out of town and you want like a travel size of it, it's the cutest, let me see if I can open it with one hand. It's the cutest little thing ever. Look how little it is. It's perfect, isn't it? I mean, you're not gonna use this much deodorant. It's 
gonna last you quite a bit. So this option is also a really good size to try if you're looking to make the change. Target has the classic scents in this size in the travel section, I believe, and they're $3. So anyway, I got the three pack, and then I also ordered, I always order these three months at a time. So I'll order three of the um, biotin supplements, and so this is, I'll do this four times a year. So three months, four times a year, I place the order, and they're pretty pricey, but I feel like when I order three at a time, it gives me enough time to plan to reorder, and I don't ever run out, because this is one of those things that you don't necessarily wanna take a break from because you do notice the difference right away. So yeah, I needed to restock these. And the code that I told you guys about, the Briogeo code, 20% off, Danny, it still works. And you can use it, you just can't use that 20% on a subscription. So if I wanted to order these on automatic shipment every two months, three months or whatever on a, on a subscription base, I can't use the promo code. So if I order them individually or if you guys order them individually, you can use that promo code still. So, oh, you guys look at this. My friend Martha sent me this. How cute is that? It's a pineapple. Look. Isn't that adorable? Do you guys remember last week I told you we went to our P.O. box, but the main office was closed? So any packages that don't fit in my actual P.O. box, they hold behind um, the counter and I have to wait till they're open. So this was there. It's a wax melter. So, um, you guys remember her little wedgies, like her wax melts or like her wax wedgies? These are what they look like. And so this is what you would put in something like that. Do you guys see the wax is in there? This is a genius idea because for example, I'll walk into my kitchen and ta-da, it smells good. But you also, this isn't something that I would recommend for those of you that have homes with small children or put, putting them low to the ground um, because it is, it's wax. Do you see the liquid wax in there? Anyway, so it's a super happy mail day. And this here is a special uh, message for my Panda Candace who actually asked about my wedding band. So, um, let me see if I can prop you guys up. So I talked about, I talked about something in my vlog that I posted today from last weekend. I talked about something and she said, um, oh, I said we got married. It was like the announcement video, well, unofficial announcement video. And she asked if I would show you guys my um, wedding ring. They're dirty, so <laughs> FYI, they're dirty. Um, if you guys ever wanted to see a close up, that's what they, what they look like. They are very simple, I think. They're more on the dainty side and they don't have stones that go all the way around. I am a fan of gold, like yellow gold, not white gold. And so I wanted to make sure to incorporate that. So that's a close up of what they look like. I really like this little guy because on its own, it's so dainty and so fine and so beautiful. And I think it's just one of those kind of timeless pieces. It is a custom, the custom setting from Jared, the gallery of jewelers, it is custom, but it was cheaper to do the custom than to buy a pre-made setting. Isn't that weird? So we went ahead and did the custom, which was cool because my fingers are so skinny. We didn't need to resize anything, which is a fee on top of the setting already. So it was so bizarre and I, I really like it. A lot of you guys commented about um, having uh, stones all the way around the band and we talked about it on Instagram already, but they jewelers don't recommend that you put stones all the way around because throughout the life of the ring, you will need to resize it, whether it's making it smaller or bigger, but when a ring has stones all the way around, you basically have to melt it down completely or ruin some of the stones to re resize the ring or you have to recut stones and you can't find the same size and stuff like that. So it's a lot easier to just do stones on the front half. And then the other thing was beads, putting beads. Uh, the other solution was putting beads on the inside of a band. So there's this cool jeweler's technique, which I actually had in my original wedding set the first time I got married and I hated it. Um, they put two, two, precious metal or of the same metal of your band they'll put two metal beads on the inside like sticking in and so they make the band bigger than your ring size but then they put the beads on the inside so there's some sense of flexibility 
when it comes to the fit of the ring. So whether you're swollen or skinny or cold or gain weight or lose weight, the rings always hang on because they have those little beads on the inside like grippies. Anyway, so it's been a productive morning for me, but it would have been a boring morning for y'all, which is why I didn't vlog. Um, I'm excited to post that video on Monday. At the very end of it, I show you guys our wedding album. I was able to kind of record every page of it and put it at the end of the vlog, so hopefully you guys will get a kick out of that. Parker and the girls are actually coming over later today, and they are spending the night. And while saying that out loud to you guys might sound weird, it is our dynamic right now. It is kind of like our family situation. We are looking for our perfect family home, a home that will be kind of our home, the six of us, and the process of looking for homes and offers and just finding your perfect home for six different personalities isn't hard. It's just a lot of work. <laughs> so um, we are taking our time and we're enjoying the process and that's kind of where we're at right now. So it's a lot easier the current setting and dynamic that we're working right now is what works for our family at the moment. So while a lot of people tend to have strong opinions about it, it's what we're doing and it's temporary, you know? Like most things in life, everything is temporary and if it's something really, 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 really bad, well, it's temporary. And if it's something really, 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 really good, it's also temporary. Nothing lasts forever. So it's just what we're doing right now. And they wanted to come over. I don't know if they want to cook dinner or if they want to make dinner. I already told them that today is not passing that I don't get a giant ice cream cone. <laughs> that was my only request. You know, the other thing too is my Buzz Balls package came in. You guys, they sent me a box in the mail with like five buzz balls in it, just five random flavors in there. And so I took the box directly, like the, the direct box, I just put it and I threw it in the fridge. And I was like, the next time Parker and I have some downtime, we're gonna taste these. And I think we should taste them in front of you guys. I mean, in all fairness, you know, like if I went on my favorites video and I publicly talked about how the buzz balls that we bought originally tasted like sumo wrestler fart, then the least I can do is try these other flavors and either stand firm in my review or, you know, eat my words, which is fine. I've never been opposed to saying, hey guys, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I've never, I've... Yeah, there's no ego here. <laughs> so hopefully I'm wrong so that I don't ever have to experience a donkey kicking me or a sumo wrestler farting in my mouth again, you know? <laughs> and you'll never understand that joke unless you saw that video. 